Good morning and thank you, President Papali, Board of Directors, members of the graduating class, faculty, family, and friends. As John mentioned, uh, I wanted to learn more about the program before I spoke to you. And I thought it would be worthwhile and fun to visit the Lake Forest campus and attend some classes. It was worthwhile, but I have to be honest, the fun part was a little lacking. I couldn't find one frat party. There were no campus mixers, no tailgating parties, not even a softball game. It's not exactly how I remember college life. Of course, the demands weren't the same either. The average age of the students graduating is 38, and most of you have a full-time career and families. Yet, somehow you managed to find the time to invest in your education. And that might have meant that you were there during the week, after work, or on Saturdays, but you spent two to four years working on graduating. And I think that's uh, definitely years full of many sacrifices for both you and your families, and it's really a terrific accomplishment. Congratulations. At Medline being uh, privately held, we think about things from both the short-term perspective and the long-term perspective. So when I was writing the speech, I thought that would be a good way to organize my thoughts. And uh, later on, I'll share some suggestions for the future. But I have two pieces of advice that you can use now. Advice that I hope you will act on in the next 48 hours. Number one, thank anyone who had anything to do with your schooling in the last couple of years. Obviously that includes your family and your friends, but it might also include some of the people you work with. I know many of you have had your graduate education partially or wholly funded by your employers, and even if you didn't, I'd hope that you work somewhere where your employer Try to be accommodating with your work schedule to allow for graduate studies. Occasionally, I receive a thank you note from an employee that has recently graduated. As an employer, I want to share with you that a small thank you note, written, not emailed, can have a big impact on your career. It tells me a lot about a person's character. Not just because someone took the time to write and say thank you, that alone would make you stand out from the crowd. But there's more to it than that. The fact that you now have a graduate degree earned while working full time says to me that you're capable of, of accomplishing a great deal in life. And I don't think I'm alone with this thought. Now the second thing I'd recommend is that you tell your boss, or even your boss's boss, what else you think you can take on. You should do it now because it ties in with a thank you note and it shows your employer that their investment in you was a good decision. It's also a very logical conclusion for an employer to reach given the completion of your studies. Those are the two things I do in the next 48 hours. If you have extra time, then write your favorite instructor and tell them how much you learned. Although I didn't find any great frat parties, which might not have gone over too well with my wife if I did, um, I did really find some very interesting classes taught by a tremendously talented and enthusiastic faculty. Not only are these instructors excellent scholastically, they also have hands-on real life experience. And I found that to be a refreshing change from when I was in school. I've never found a better teacher than experience. So I've given you some ideas to use right now. To give you some advice for the future, I'd like to share a few stories with you. I believe many experiences from the sports world can be applied to business, particularly in the area of goal setting. I have three sons who are here with my mom and my wife Nancy today. 
Justin is 13, and he dreams of making it to the major leagues one day. However, if, it doesn't, if things don't quite work out, his fallback is a line. But, <laughs> but a couple of years ago, I took him to a local baseball clinic that Joe Girardi was hosting. Now, uh, for those of you that don't know Joe, Joe is a Chicago native, and he played for both the Chicago, Chicago Cubs and the New York Yankees, and he's now the manager of the Yankees. It was a very small clinic, so you could talk to him, and I asked him to describe the difference between the Cubs organization and the Yankees organization. And he told me, during spring training every year, the Cubs' goal was to make it to the playoffs. But the Yankees' goal was to win the World Series. Now, for the record, the New York Yankees have played in the World Series 40 times. They have won the World Series 27 times. The last time the Cubs even made it to the World Series was 1945. And unfortunately for me, and many of you hopefully in the crowd, the last time they won the World Series was 103 years ago, and it looks like 104 is about to come around. The lesson to be learned, though, is you must set your goals high. Thankfully in business, it isn't an all-or-nothing proposition, like winning the World Series, where you have one team and 29 losers. You can have a lot of great companies competing in the same industry, which I believe is the case in the industry I'm in, which is healthcare. And if you set your goals high enough, even if you fall short, you can still be tremendously successful. Now, my other two sons, Brad and Tommy, are runners, so I'm particularly fond of this next story. In 1954, Roger Bannister became the first man to run a mile in less than four minutes. Bannister's time was three minutes, 59 seconds. After achieving his goal, Bannister commented, doctors and scientists said that breaking the four minute mile was impossible, that one would die in the attempt. So when I got up from the track, after collapsing at the finish line, I figured I was dead. <laughs> you may laugh, but a lot of people at the time really did believe running a four minute mile was impossible. But now the top runners in high school and in college are breaking the four minute mile barrier. The lesson here to be learned is don't let anyone tell you something is impossible. In business, as in sports, there will always be obstacles to overcome. But if you face them with all the conviction of the New York Yankees and the attitude of Roger Bannister, any obstacle can be overcome. Now, although Medline is a successful company, we've certainly faced our share of challenges. One challenge almost shut us down. It was 1996, and like many companies, we were operating on an older computer system that was quickly becoming outdated. We decided to install a new enterprise-wide computer system that would add efficiency to almost every part of our business, or so we thought. We hired consultants and they spent 18 months writing the system to go live. And at last we were ready. However, as soon as we hit the switch to go live, everything came crashing down. Now the problem was that the system was not stress tested adequately and couldn't handle, handle the volume of orders that we put through it. So everything, and I mean everything, went haywire. We had no visibility to our inventory. Customer service was crippled. What previously had taken them seconds to look up now literally took hours. Some customers were getting double orders. Other customers were receiving the wrong products. It was as if the Three Stooges were running a medical supply company, just a complete mess. Our business was falling apart before our very eyes. Our old system was gone, and the consultant said it would take 18 months to fix the problems. We didn't have 18 months. We'd be out of business before that. So what did we do? 
First, we fire the consultants. <laughs> and, and then we took matter, matters into our own hands and we gathered all our employees. And we explained to them what was the cause of the problem and the dire situation we were in. And we asked everybody to work Saturdays. We paid bonuses for it, but we pretty much asked everybody to do it. And I expected that the news that our company was on life support and that people were going to have to come in and work Saturdays wouldn't be very well received. But the thousands of people who work in Medline work Saturdays without complaint. Some came in on Sundays. Others brought cats into their office and slept there. And morale was never higher. We fixed the problems not in 18 months, but in about two and a half months. And we never looked back. Since then, our sales have grown ninefold. And our consultants have gone back. That bad experience brought us even closer together as an organization. It taught us a lot about crisis management, and most importantly, I learned it's good to confront problems head on. And that if you're open and honest about the situation, you can get through almost anything in business and in life. As you leave here today with your well-deserved degrees, I encourage you to think about some of the things I've shared today. Set new goals for yourself. Set them higher than you could ever imagine and then begin working hard to achieve them. If you fail the first, tenth, or hundredth time, keep trying and never give up. Choose what's important in your life and commit yourself to it. I wish all of you the very best as you go forward. Congratulations again, class of 2011.